Despite the fabled green shoots of recovery that the UK's economy is currently seeing, there remain several pain points that CIOs feel on their budgets. This could be related to storage requirements or hardware sprawl, licensing issues, the cost of ensuring high availability of systems and applications or security. Later on we'll be speaking to two CIOs to see how they cope with these issues, but first we've come here to London's South Bank to speak to IBM. So data volumes are growing, how do you advise clients to deal with their storage expansion needs? So uh, the best uh, way of addressing this is to leverage every trick in the book, if you like, from a storage technology perspective to minimise the amount of data you need to store by using techniques like uh, compression and, and deduplication and also to make sure you store uh, data in the right place. So you put what you can on inexpensive storage and then you use automatic storage tiering to move the data to uh, the high performance media when you need it there. So that's the strategic overview. Let's take a look at what the end users are doing in practice. The way we look after storage is we try to make sure that our storage costs are flat or reduced every year regardless of whatever's going on because you can't explain to a business, well, we need more money for storage because you're asking for more data or whatever. It, you know, they'll just say, oh, we don't understand what you're talking about. So we do it in two ways. The first one is technical. So we are constantly looking for new technologies to help us better manage our storage, whether it's using um, cheaper storage or faster, more efficient storage or less of it or the cloud. Uh, we're, we're constantly looking. The second thing is what I would call process. Uh, so we manage our demand uh, to say, do you really need that? Um, why do you need so many environments? IT are typically uh, not one of the greatest people for storage, so we tend to consume an awful lot of environments, test data, etc. Uh, and then also our business colleagues as well. We're looking at, you know, wh wh why do you need five years worth of history? Is that really necessary uh, when you're talking about an awful lot of data storage? So I think things like that are probably the best things. Computing's Peter Gothard spoke to Simon Goodman, Head of Information Systems Strategy at Network Rail. So Simon, how does Network Rail manage its storage expansion needs? We have some very, very good capacity management processes. So year-on-year -year cycles, we're able to understand exactly where our business growth is going and able to cater for that and put that in accordingly. I think the second thing for me is actually understanding the different types of technology that's now coming onto the marketplace that actually get us to think slightly differently from how we've done traditional techniques. So a good example would be instead of using big, fat, allocated storage, the way in which we deploy storage by thin provisioning allows us to over um, populate and provide uh, and making sure that we get maximum efficiency for whatever storage we provide. And I think lastly, um, it's just slightly more softer, is actually having some extremely good relationships with our business colleagues um, to really understand exactly what they're trying to achieve as a business. And so by having that great interaction between traditional IT and front-end business, we can actually then predetermine where the likely sprawl of storage would be. What about the wider industry? I spoke to Computing's research editor John Leonard to find out where storage ranks in terms of IT spend. We asked 100 IT decision makers in large organisations what they've been up to for the last three years and they've certainly been a busy bunch. So for example 79% have um, consolidated their server estate in this time and 76% said that they've invested in um, specialised storage infrastructure. So we're talking about um, storage appliances, SSDs, SANs, this sort of thing. When we asked about which items required the most expenditure from the IT budget, two came pretty much neck and neck. And they were licensing issues and um, storage expansion. After that we had things like ensuring high availability, um, security patching, uh, server sprawl, all this sort of thing. So storage is high on the list of IT spending priorities and licensing is also right up there, which we'll come back to shortly. But what about hardware sprawl? So this need to cope with additional storage, it sounds like extra kit. And if clients come into you saying, well, we've got a problem with hardware sprawl, this extra kit might not necessarily help them. So how do you sort of ta tally those two concerns up against one another? <laughs> um, well, uh, if you're going to make a change and improvement to something, you almost always need either some more software or some more hardware. There's, um, uh, I suppose, no such thing, thing as a free lunch. Uh, but uh, you can target those investments effectively. So, for example, we have uh, a storage virtualization appliance that uh, you can put in front of existing storage uh, to allow you to uh, protect the investment in that storage and free up space if you like to take a holiday from buying storage. 
uh, if we can free up 50%, or in some cases even 80% of the uh, storage that's already been used through compression, uh, then that reduces the amount of uh, capacity required, reduces the amount of space it takes up and so on. For Marks and Spencer, at least part of the solution lies in virtualization. We're doing quite a lot with virtualization, um, but I think we've got too many different technologies in this place. So I think we've got uh, an opportunity to consolidate down further. Um, so we're running a program now to look at how we can do that. So information management within Network Rail is quite fortunate because we have total control of the IT budget and therefore we're able to understand exactly what technology is going to land into the data centre. I think it's fair to say that the, the hardware aspects have grown over a period of time to meet the capacity needs of the organisation. But there's two ways in which we can tackle that. One is we're looking actively to reduce the amount of overall applications within the, the overall estate. Um, we're streamlining business processes and we have a number of big business transformation activities that allow us to actually cut off old unused applications. I think the second aspect is actually again we're using newer technologies such as virtualization to actually take some of that big back-end data centre presence away and certainly within the next three years we'll be looked to have around about 80% of our total estate virtualized. Let's come back to licensing. How do end users ensure they keep on top of requirements? So software license management is one of the hardest things uh, to do, especially in a big corporation where you've got international angles, you've also got third parties as well, and now you've got the cloud as well. Um, so we, we make sure we've bought some new software to make sure that we're on top of everything. Um, and to make sure that we're paying the, the uh, correct amount for our, all of our software. Licensing is always a difficult one uh, and certainly something that we've seen certainly since the economic downturn. Generally speaking, organisations that are providing software licences look to get their money from software maintenance, software licences, etc. And so we're seeing a bigger demand from those industries where we're not spending money to try and capitalise on people's inability to be able to manage licences. And we tackle it two ways. Standard desktop uh, applications that sit within a laptop or a desktop, we use automated software for deployment and management. So when somebody calls in and want a particular license, we deploy it. So I have a fairly good control over that. For some of the enterprise software, such as your Oracle eBusiness, your Microsoft desktop, uh, maybe your IBM WebSphere, Again, we have long multi-year deals in place. We do a true up every year. We'll work with those key manufacturers to get an understanding of what we're using. And again, it goes back to my other point about having good capacity management in place. So we have a good understanding of exactly what we're using and where. At the top of CIO's priorities is keeping the lights on, an area which can also prove a huge drain on the budget. In the area of availability, there's always two major things. One is the question of uh, scheduled downtime and the other is unscheduled downtime. So how do you uh, make sure that if there's any failure or disaster or whatever, you can rapidly recover from it? And the other one is how do you make sure that uh, whatever you do, whatever changes you made, uh, are done quickly and don't cause any outages themselves, so you reduce the risk of change. So we've been putting a lot of work into both of those areas, designing availability into the systems that we build, but also making sure that we can automate changes, which reduces the risks of those changes, uh, allows you to perform the changes much more quickly than you might have done in the past, and be more assured that it isn't going to cause an outage. Because when you hear in the, uh, in the press about you know, some of these big outages that high-profile organisations have suffered, it's almost always a uh, change with a human error. Those two things together are the killer combination and the more we can automate, the, uh, the lower the risk of causing an outage. This is what it's all about. I mean, in our business, you've got to make sure that your tools are working and you can get stock to the store or to the customer uh, if it's a multi-channel order. Uh, so what we do is every Monday, 12 o'clock, uh, before the corporate trading meeting, we make sure that we've gone through every single SEV nor incident or severity, high severity impact incident, uh, and we understand uh, what the root cause was um, and whether it was something that was change related or whether it was what I would call a sleeping incident. So that's something that we could have probably avoided if we'd been more awake and alert. So that would be, I don't know, for example, like a server filling up or a number of messages or a, a, a parameter not set right or anything like that at all. Um, so it's, as I say, it's something that we're rarely on um, because I think that that's the, uh, that's the main part of my job, to be honest with you. It's like your defence in football. 
you've got to make sure your defence is sorted out before you go and attack. I guess there's two aspects to this. So generally high availability would be built in as part of any new system when you're deploying it. So really key is actually understanding what those non-functional requirements are. When is, you know, your likely business cycles when they're going to need and when can we put in maintenance and everything else. Now that's fine from a day one system. I think the reality is today that systems that have been put in certainly in the last five to ten years and also from what we're seeing from base consumer technologies, internet technologies and everything else, the expectations of the end user is far greater than necessarily what has actually been designed for the system. And so there is this constant challenge for us to actually revisit and review and look at the underpinning architecture to make sure actually can we satisfy that service level agreement? Can we really provide the high availability for what the business needs? The converse of that equally though is actually have we put in too much? Because actually if business cycles change, there's also the ability for us to say actually you no longer need a 24 by 7 environment from that. Actually a 9 to 5 Monday to Friday will be sufficient given the business risk that we're trying to protect against. But as computing's John Leonard points out, CIOs also need to know what tasks occupy their team's time. It's not just about the money. IT directors also need to be aware about what their team is doing and how many hours they're spending on each of these activities. And at the top of this list, we have patching and uh, security updates, followed by ensuring high availability and then dealing with issues of service brawl. So security is a key time-consuming task and it also accounts for a significant portion of the IT budget. A project at Marks & Spencer to bring the web platform in-house away from Amazon Web Services has complicated their security requirements. Again, this is an area we're going to have to really up our game because uh, with the project to um, bring all of the Amazon platform back in-house, uh, Amazon used to provide us with the security. Uh, now we're going to be doing that ourselves. So in advance of that, about a year and a half ago, we went out and we really beefed up that team, um, doubled it in size, also doubled it from terms of experience and uh, from the outside world as well. So I think we've tried to change the way we look at security from a you know, you can't do this and you can't do that to something which is now much more like how can we enable you to deliver this project but make sure we do it in a secure way. I think it's fair to say from a network rail perspective we've always had a fairly good um, information security team and our IT um, security has been and uh, generally gets tested on a regular basis is fairly good. Within network rail though the railway is, is radically changing and the way in which we use the railway today and how it's operated we are moving away from the traditional um, engineering concepts of civil, uh, civil mechanical and electrical engineering. Computer systems engineering now plays a huge part in how we run the railway and so cyber security is a very, uh, a very real and prevalent threat to us and we have a huge program of work now undergoing to actually really understand exactly what countermeasures we will need to employ certainly over the next 5 to 15 years um, to be able to protect the core railway operation and its assets. So these five areas, storage, availability, hardware sprawl, licensing and security take up the majority of IT leaders' time and budgets. Storage and licensing are the most expensive areas with the largest number of unexpected costs. Whilst security consumed less of the budget, it actually took up more of IT teams' time than any other area.